Good morning. Good morning, Mayor Venable, members of the commission. My name is Cindy Holmes Drury. I'm at 340 Canterbury Drive in Blackpool. Um, of course, I'm a Sullivan County resident and an active volunteer at the SBK shelter in Blackpool. I'm here today to voice my concerns regarding the proposed consolidated pet works animal adoption center that's currently being planned for Kingsport. Forgive me for using notes, but if I don't, I'll never get through this in three minutes. While the current SBK facilities in both Kingsport and Blumpel are, and I quote, woefully inadequate, as assessed by a 2016 examination conducted by the University of Tennessee Institute for Public Service, I'm strongly opposed to a new shelter being built in Kingsport. A facility that serves a county of 430 square miles needs to be in a convenient central location, not in its far northwestern corner. If SBK is supposed to serve all of the citizens of Sullivan County, and more importantly, the animals of our county, its shelter needs to be centrally located, and I say this for a number of reasons. I'm concerned that many residents will not drive to Kingsport to surrender unwanted animals and those animals will unfortunately be dumped in remote areas of the county. Kingsport might not seem like a long drive to some residents, but others will not be bothered to drive a distance to give up an animal that they might not even care about in the first place. <clears throat> Crystal residents will also have further to drive to reclaim lost animals. It's not unusual at all for pets to escape from their owners and their homes and subsequently be picked up by animal control and taken to the shelter. It will be a huge inconvenience for pet owners to drive that distance, and some may opt out of even reclaiming if transportation isn't readily available to them. The SBK shelter in Blountville receives tremendous support from Blountville and the Bristol communities through fundraising efforts, animal and food, animal food and supply donations, and adoption event sponsorship and participation. Just this past weekend, PetSmart at Exit 7 hosted us at their National Pet Adoption Weekend. And the weekend before that, the Pinnacle Marquee Theaters invited us to be a part of the release of a new children's movie by bringing dogs and cats for an adoption event. It's concerning that these types of events in Bristol might cease if they're not coordinated by a Kingsport shelter. It's also concerning that some residents will not be willing to drive a longer distance to donate items and support a shelter located such a distance away. It seems that a larger staff of employees and volunteers would be required in the Kingsport facility to carry on with this level of support from the community. But in an interview given to WCYB on January 17th, SBK President Tom Parham stated, and I quote, we're going to consolidate in one, reduce staff, and be more efficient. Today, citizens and shelter volunteers have repeatedly asked board members and county commissioners exactly how many kennels for dogs the new shelter will contain, as well as the anticipated capacity for cats. We've received no definitive response. It seems that a consolidated shelter would contain more kennels for dogs and cages for cats than both of the shelters combined currently have. If this is the case, it would also seem that there would be a need for increased staff as opposed to reduction in staff. If the proposed Pet Works Adoption Center aspires to be a no-kill facility, as described in its mission statement, then a larger facility more than the combined current facility with more employees will be needed. Also, more volunteers will be needed. I can assure you as I stand here that most of the current volunteers at the Blanco facility will not volunteer to propose new Kingsport facility. Most of our Blanco volunteers live in Blanco, Bristol, and Piney Flats. It makes little sense for those of us who coordinate and participate in adoption events to drive to Kingsport to transfer to animals. And back to Kingsport, our volunteer group, as well as the employees of the Blountville Shelter, are very dedicated and work diligently to place animals in permanent caring homes. If you haven't visited our shelter recently, or perhaps at all, I encourage you to do so. Attend one of our adoption events. Talk to our volunteers. Finally, and I'll wrap up here, I want to say that a homeless animal doesn't know he's being housed in a three and a half million dollar facility. All he cares about is attention, food, and water. And as volunteers, we want all of those things for him, plus a decent chance of getting them placed in a permanent caring home. Local shelters, employees, and volunteers are its biggest assets. Also, consideration needs to be given to updating the current facilities instead of constructing a new one. The county owns the shelters, and the money being spent on a new shelter could go a long way to improving what is currently in use. Let me go back to the 2016 statement, uh, the, the um, assessment that I mentioned early, earlier. 
It stated on page 11 of that study, the consultants assigned to the study stated that we highly recommend a single, new, centrally located facility. I respectfully ask that you carefully consider your vote today to appropriate funding for the land for a new shelter. I thank you for your time, and I hope you'll consider the best interest of the citizens and animals of our county by building a facility that's centrally located or by improving and enlarging our existing shelters. Thank, thank you. you.